Hey, it's Joyce. And Tegan here. And welcome to Trailblazing Women podcast episode two. We are so excited to be here. Um, today's topic is all about leadership and, a, and the significance it has in the entrepreneurial success. So we're really, really excited to be here. Yeah. So episode two, Tegan, how exciting. I know. It's crazy. It's so fun to, to do this. I, I'm so glad that we decided to say yes. <laughs> yeah, this is super fun. This is absolutely amazing. So uh, I don't know who wants to start today, but Tegan started last time. So let why don't you take it away again, Tegan? You're you're great at getting started with this. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the spot much. Okay. I know, right? Um, just wanted to, like, I'm excited about this. So I'm going to shout this from the rooftops. We officially expanded to, like, all podcast platforms. So we're on Spotify. We're on Google. We're on uh, Apple Podcasts. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook Live. Like, pretty sure literally anywhere you can listen, you can find us. And if you uh, give us a little, like, subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening for, we would really, really appreciate that. So just adds up. We are everywhere. So you can listen to us in your car. You can listen to us when you're getting ready for dinner, like whatever you want, um, which I kind of love. Me too. It's so awesome. And uh, thanks to Tegan for organizing all of that. I uh, didn't take care of any of that. <clears throat> that was all on her. So uh, thanks, Tegan. That's that's super exciting. I'm excited to be on all those places because, you know, everybody has their preference, right? When it comes to podcasts or whatever, and they don't know, or they have their choice of where they listen in on. I'm a personally, I'm a Spotify person, but I know there's a lot of people that uh, listen to Apple podcasts too, right? So it's just nice to have that variety. It was pretty cool. I texted Joyce. And I was like, oh my God, we're on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so today's topic is really just talking, we want to talk about like leadership um, and how it plays such a significant role in being an entrepreneur, especially when it comes to being in the network marketing industry as well. Um, I feel leadership is such an important part of your entrepreneurial journey for sure. Um, so I feel like essentially, um, like talking about like, okay, so we'll talk about like team building leadership skills here. So I, I'm like a firm believer in presenting yourself as a good leader to your team. So if you want to build a team, if you really want to be successful, um, it's so important to essentially just constantly be there for your team. So now when I say constantly, I don't necessarily mean like all the time, like 24 seven, but it's more of just, you know, like just showing your team that you're available to them and providing them with those leadership skills so they can do the same thing. I have been a leader in my past place. I'm a current leader. I love like leading a team. I'm passionate about that. And I'm also really passionate about helping my team become successful leaders themselves. So, um, yeah, so I, I talk about that with my team all the time and I'm, I'm really available to my team and I'm, I'm constantly, you know, engaging with them and sort of, you know, checking in on them and seeing if they need stuff, all that kind of stuff. And I also feel that having that, um, like even my leaders above me being able to, you know, always be sort of hands-on available to me is such a powerful thing because it keeps you going. It keeps you motivated. It keeps you encouraged when you have that support because it becomes this, you know, this community of, um, of women empowering other women. And it's, it's really quite, um, incredible. I'm, I'm very, very passionate about being a good leader. That's for sure. <laughs> I think, oh my goodness, yes. I think the amazing thing about leadership too is doesn't matter, matter, doesn't matter. <laughs> oh hey, God, we're live here. It doesn't matter. You just we're say only two, We're only two minutes in and I'm already stumbling on my words. Oh boy. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter what level you are though. Like you can be like the beginning leader or you can be, you know, top of your organization. And I think the, the best thing with like the company that we are specifically is we can reach out to anyone. So whether you're reaching out down here, you're reaching out up here, it's all the same level and there's no like looking down on new leaders or there's none of that. But I think there's also like leadership is so tricky because it's that fine balance of, like you said, being there, like I'm the same way. I am always there for my team um, almost to a fault, 
where like I will message back people at midnight before I go to bed as opposed to leaving it till the next morning. Like I'm really bad with that. But I think it's something that I'm trying to really work on myself because I want people to see like if they're joining my team or joining our organization or, you know, becoming a customer and looking at the possibility of that, they need to know that it's okay to, and in fact, it's encouraged to take the time to respond when is convenient for you to, that there's a balance between being there, but not overly being there and still taking time for yourself And so that's something I'm really trying to work on because I want the people that are seeing what I do in my business, regardless if they want to join or not, know that the whole purpose of this is the work-life balance and not being tied to your phone and not like, oh, I got a message. I have to respond right away. Like there's no, unless realistically, there's no business emergency. There's no like, maybe there's, you know, instances that are more like timely than others. Um... But is it going to make a difference if I respond at midnight or, you know, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. the next morning? Probably not. And it just goes to show that you don't have to be on your phone all the time. Like you can still be a good leader and take family time and take those weekends and take those long weekends. And there are certain people that, you know, expect a response right away. And there are certain people that are okay with that. And I think it's just a matter of establishing those boundaries and saying like, okay, I am I am a good leader. I'm here for you. You know that. But if I don't respond to you right away, I'm not ignoring you. I don't dislike your message or anything like that. It's I'm family time or I'm, you know, watching a movie with whatever, right? Like there's that balance I think is really, really important. And I'm, I'm still working on that. It's been four years, five years, and I'm still trying to work on that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can totally agree with you there. I'm kind of the same way. I I definitely feel like I need to have a balance for sure and struggle with that. And I I think there's, I think we're not the only ones when it comes to that. I feel that that's like a pretty normal thing. And you know what, it also comes down to the fact that if you're really passionate about being an entrepreneur, sometimes we dive ourselves into being an entrepreneur so much that we just forget about that work-life balance. (laughs) We don't realize that, you know what I mean? Like you're so passionate about it that like, it doesn't feel like work, right? Our work is our life. There is no balance. Our work is our life. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And so then that's where I think the struggle comes in is that it's literally, we're so passionate about what we're doing and it doesn't feel like work that we forget that there is more to things than that. Like there, we need to have that personal life balance too. And like, for me, my biggest thing has been, I try to focus the most on like focusing on like, um, Jordan, my fiance with like on Sundays, like I try my best to just kind of unplug on Sundays and, you know, um, sort of disengage a little bit. It might not be all day, but I definitely try to do it. Like, especially later in the day, it's like, okay, I put my phone away and it's like, okay, it's time to just not be on my phone anymore and really spend time with him and get away, um, from constantly (laughs) engaging with other people and talking with other people, because I want people to understand too, that I do have a life. And if I'm constantly hands-on, then it, just uh it gives the impression that I'm uh maybe a little bit of a workaholic (laughs) so it's like okay I gotta I gotta like pull back a little bit right so it's just a reminder I think I have to just I think that any any of us have to have those reminders of like okay you know it's time to to unplug a little bit and not to stress about being away and just saying, you know, tomorrow's a new day. I can get back at it tomorrow. Right. And that's why I actually really love Mondays. Mondays have been like (laughs) one thing for me. Like I love Mondays. I'm so passionate about Mondays because it's like a new week, there's new goals. And it's like, now it's time to like really hone in and plug in for the week kind of a thing. Right. So um, yeah, I totally hear you when it comes to the work life balance. I love Mondays. Who says that? Nobody. Um, I know. But it's true. I do actually like a Monday. Yeah. Um, and I think like even just to preface, you know what, there's the beauty of leadership is that there's so many different styles of leadership. 
And just because like Joyce and I obviously have similar, similar mindsets in regards to like being all in and working with your team day in and day out. But that doesn't mean that that's everybody's leadership style. And that's okay. Like we're not just because your leadership style isn't like us, or you're not like all in all the time, or you're not constantly on your phone, or that doesn't mean you're a bad leader. That doesn't mean anything like that. It just means you have a different leadership style. And frankly, like I applaud that because um, it's really, really interesting to see the different leadership styles. Like we're all leaders in some way or another, and we all have different ways of helping our team or, you know, encouraging our team or celebrating our team or, oh, there's Rosie <laughs> <laughs> or anything like that. But um, I'm going to let you talk and shush her up. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, so let's dive actually a little bit into, you know, uh, key leadership traits, uh, what is crucial about them in entrepreneurial success, how these traits contribute to building a strong team and driving business growth. So, you know, for me, this, this we're going to go kind of back a little bit. So what I was saying before, but um, essentially, leadership to me and how I feel that I've been successful in what I do is literally just, first of all, um, biggest thing is consistency, consistently being available to, you know, my team and their growth. Um, I also feel that it's really important to cheer my team on. I'm a firm believer in that, in cheering my team on constantly, inspiring them, motivating them to want to, um, you know, keep plugging in because I know what it feels like when somebody is like, oh my God, you're doing amazing. I'm so excited for you or you're close to this or you're close to that. Like, what do you need? Let's, let's help you get there kind of a thing. I know how strong of a, like how, like how strong that is to me personally and how that makes me feel. So I want to do that to my team because a time and time again, I'm like, and this is not to toot my own horn at all, but I literally have had my team members, you know, say to me that the reason I'm doing this business is because of you, because of the fact that you're constantly there to help me, because of the fact that you're pushing me, you know, to get outside my comfort zone and do these certain things. And I, if I would not be here today, if it weren't for you. And those are powerful words as a leader to hear. And they're, they really warm my heart and they make me feel really good about myself, but it also makes me want to continue to be there for them and constantly push them into places that they may have never seen possible. And like, it's just, and that to me is like a hundred percent that success, like right there, that success, you're just building this massive strength between your team and, you know, showing your support to them, no matter what you're doing. And it like, it really rubs off and it makes them feel good about themselves. And I think that that's a powerful way to essentially allow for growth, right? No, I love that. Okay, I'm actually back. <laughs> oh my goodness. The beauty of live is Rosie will pipe in at any point. Yeah. Um, so apologies if that was really, really loud. But I think, and like just to kind of allude to that or like continue on that point is the importance of leading by example. And I think, like you said, shout your team up from the rooftops, like how you like to be celebrated and not everybody likes to be celebrated the same way and that's okay. But I think, you know, when I see my leader on Facebook has just, or, or like on whatever platform or I hear or whatever, that she has earned, you know, this promotion or this incentive or this, you know, whatever it happens to be, I know that I can do that because if she can do it, I can do it. And I, that's what I want anybody who, you know, jumps on or the team or like anyone who's kind of working with me to know that, okay, I, if I can do it, then you can do it too. Like I'm nobody special by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm doing the things and I'm working and 
if I see my leader do that, then I'm like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. And same thing, like if I can do it, they can do it. And that is why I do like, you know, post those posts on Facebook that are like, you know, Tegan just earned this or Joyce just earned that. And then your team, exactly that. Your team is like, oh, I'm doing this because I know that you can do it. Or I'm doing this because you're pushing me. Like I, my biggest motivator, and this is really, really bad, but my biggest motivator is to beat the person above me. So if I'm like this, not beat, but show that like if my leader is hitting this I'm like okay well I can do that too like I need to push myself to get from here to here and push myself to get to that next level and it's almost that their their success their results are my motivating or driving factor to be like hey I can get there too I can do that too so I think that's the importance of um you know doing the things and not just because you're a leader like shying away from your results or your success like you need to celebrate that just as much as celebrating your team because your team, whether or not you know it, looks up to you. And um, like I can't tell you how many times I've, you know, scrolled my my uplines or even someone in the company that I have no idea scrolled their Facebook and be like, mm, okay, they hit this level at this point and they hit this level at this point. So that means that I got to aim for this at this point. <laughs> it's, it's kind of bad, but it's kind of like fun to know that like, hey, they can do it. So can I. Well, that kind of comes down to like, I think this is one thing that many of us might struggle with is constantly comparing ourselves to others. And it's so important not to do that. And I think that we constantly need to remind ourselves day in and day out to not compare ourselves to other people's success, but instead compare yourself to you and what you might have achieved in the past and how you can improve on what you've done before. You know, I'm trying to really um, practice that myself. And, you know, like when it comes to this, this isn't the first time I've I've been involved with a network marketing business. I have been involved with network marketing for the last 15 years. So I've been and done many different uh, businesses and all that kind of stuff and had teams and built teams and stuff. So what I'm really trying to focus on is really trying to look at my past success and comparing my past success to today in constantly driving myself to move, like get past, like essentially just get higher or not necessarily get higher, but, you know, compete against myself because I'd rather compete against myself than be competing against someone else because everybody's stories are different. Everybody's success looks different. And, you know, it, it's hard to not compare yourself, but at the same time, it's so important to try to stay away from doing that because um, we don't know how they got there. We don't know what allowed them to get to that success. And instead of beating yourself up, for comparing yourself to that person, just look at yourself and be like, okay, what journey am I on? How can I get better? How can I improve? How can I get to the next step? Like, you know, and then just, just really only focus in on yourself. And I think that's an important thing to know as a leader um, that you got to like, you know, demonstrate that to your team and encourage your team and really, you know, talking to them about like, this isn't about anybody else right now. It's literally just about you. Um, because, you know, it's 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 just one of those things, I think. And social media probably can be a little bit of a doubt, like a down factor with that is, is that we see all these like amazing people succeeding. And then you're like, oh, I wish that was me or whatever. Right. And naturally, that's just something that we do as human beings. But instead, just, you know what, cheer them on and power them get them like don't don't you can't be jealous like you literally cannot be jealous if anything you need to cheer them on and just you know be supportive and and excited for them and your time will come right and some people might take longer and some people not so much right but that's okay right we're all on different journeys for sure Oh, I totally agree I think there's a fine line between you know using other or looking at other people's like success or like business journey as like a comparison because comparing is terrible like it is like you said we're all on different journeys we all have different day-to-day pieces we all have different lives and families and jobs and work and problems and all the things so i think there's that fine line between you know using other people's success or journeys to compare as opposed uh, to like a motivator in that like if she can do it, I can do it, right? Like, I think there's that, there is that 
whatever you want to call it. I can't think of the word at the moment, but that proof in the pudding kind of thing to see like, okay, people are doing this. People are doing the things and they are getting somewhere with it. I can do those things too. I can, you know, work my business too. And I think you said exactly that fine line between comparison. The comparison is terrible, regardless if you're comparing yourself or you're comparing others. I think comparing others is worse, but we are all on separate journeys. And even even comparing, you know, yourself now to yourself 10 years ago or whenever you were working your prior business or whenever you were working, whatever. Comparing yourself even is difficult because my day yesterday is very different than my day today. My day five years ago was very different than my day today. And so I think it's important to not use it as a comparison, but using it as a motivator. Like, okay, I have done this before. I can do it again. Yeah. Or I have seen, you know, I've seen her do it. That means that like it is possible and I can do it too. So I think there's that, that fine line, right? Yeah, definitely. But it's, yeah, it's important to just, you know, push ourselves and, um, sorry, I'm just reading what you put on the bottom. Yeah, no worries. Um, but push ourselves and know that we are like, as entrepreneurs, we are capable of anything we put our mind to. And I'm a strong believer in that. And I'll tell everybody under the sun that, but just because you're in this business doesn't mean it's easy. It means you're capable. You are hundred percent capable and you can do anything you put your mind to, but it's not going to come at the snap of your fingers, right? You have to work the business. You have to be present maybe not every day, you know, you can take those days off, you can enjoy your holidays, you can enjoy your time, you can enjoy your your Friday, Friday evenings, your Sundays, but, you know, being there and just being consistent, whatever consistent means for you, because that's the other thing, right? Like consistency for everybody is different. Does that mean, you know, 20 minutes every day? Does that mean every Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Does that mean, you know, an hour a day? Does that mean once a week, once a month? Like, what does that mean for you? But just consistency is so important because it keeps pushing you forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, actually, I want to kind of um, even to like we we have our leader does these amazing uh, weekly mindset calls. And um, I, we were actually both of us were on the call yesterday and it was so it was so good to listen to what they were saying and talking about how when you're in an entrepreneurial uh, business and your whether it's network marketing or it's something entirely different, it doesn't have to be network marketing, but just as a whole, being an entrepreneur, like, and I said this even last week too, is, is that we have those up and down moments. Yeah. Like, you know, entrepreneurship does not go like this the whole way. We are not a straight path. It is up <laughs> and down, up and down. And it's very, very normal um, for us to experience those ups and downs. And I think a lot of the time, the reason why so many people decide to quit this business or quit being an entrepreneur is because they can't handle the downs. They can't handle the times where things are not going the way they want them to go. So I feel that it's so important to remind yourself that those down moments are not a, like you can't look at them as like a failure, but if anything, look at it as like such a way that you're like reboosting yourself. Like you're, you're sort of giving yourself that, that unwind or that time to like literally get back into the groove and move up and power through because nobody can be in power mode 24 seven. We can't, we speak, we physically can't because there is going to be times where we're going to get tired. We're going to get exhausted or whatever. And so those down times are those times to really like reflect on what's been happening to get yourself back up to that boosted stage where you're ready to like gung ho. Right. But during all those times, remaining consistent right yeah. and I think that that's like so important is that it comes down to just just like you said being consistent every day day in and day out no matter if you're having a bad day or a good day you know don't let those bad days discourage you or don't let those bad days be like oh I'm having a bad day I quit like you know because that's the thing is so many people let those bad days define their entire future of success. Right. And, um, I, that's, that's why it's like, I do feel that, you know, it's, it's, it's important for us to really reflect on that and to not let that affect where we're going and the success we're having, because, 
you know, like we, we hear it so often that, you know, like what I was listening to a call today and talking about like, you know, I'm not going to quit. Like people think I'm going to quit, but I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to stay in this longer than everybody else. And they're going to see that I can be successful, right? Because there are so many people who literally just quit so fast because they don't see the success right away. And it's disheartening to see that. And I feel for the people who struggle with that. But that is also a part of the reason why entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Not everybody can handle that, right? Yeah. But, yeah. Like, I think definitely when it talks about, like, the strategies on how to, like, really um, keep yourself on that consistent place is it, it does come down to mindset. You know, like, with that call we had yesterday, it's that reminder of, like, you know, you can get through this. Don't let yourself get discouraged when you have a bad day. Keep pushing through, right? Because there's no such thing as having good days every single day. It's just not possible. It's not yeah. realistic, right? Well, it doesn't, and even like it doesn't even matter if it's entrepreneurship or not. We're all gonna have shitty days. Yeah. And I think like entrepreneurship is a hundred percent a journey. Like it's not a get get quick rich scheme. It's yeah. not. And frankly, like no job is you start from the bottom and you work your way up. Doesn't matter if you're in entrepreneurship or if you're, you know, network marketing or if you're in corporate America, you are going to start from the bottom. You are going to start getting coffee and you are going to work your way up to, you know, CEO or president or whatever the company is. But it's going to take like people don't do that in five minutes. People take years and years and years to do that. And they don't see they try to compare, I think, you know, where they think, you know, I'm working for myself, I can do it like that instead of, you know, that progression of probably like if you come out of school and you start the bare minimum entry level position in, you know, 20 years, then you're going to be at the top of the company. Maybe not depends on the company, but it's not going to be a next year overnight thing. And I don't think people realize that. I think the beauty of entrepreneurship is you can, you can fast track it a little bit because you can determine how much you work and how much you push and how much you want to put into it like it's a little bit different but it's still going to take you time it's not gonna you're not going to get to the top of the top of the food chain in you know 20 minutes or even a year like you're not that's not going to happen it, it's you're going to work your way up 100 percent, but you're not going to get to the top and I think that's what a lot of people you know struggle with or I don't want to say refuse to admit because that sounds really bad but it's hard to understand and it is because we we all are in that mentality that we want the immediate answer. We want the immediate result regardless of what we're doing or what we're working on. And, you know, I'm guilty for that too. I send, you know, 10 messages and I want, I want the orders. I want the recruits. I want the team members. I want them like that. And it just doesn't happen. It's consistency and it's, you know, that little bit, that little bit that's going to like, you're going to do this, but eventually you're going to go up. You're going to go up and down. You're eventually going to go up. Whereas, you know, you're still going to go those downs. You're still going to, but you're consistently and you're going up towards the end, yeah. right? Like, I think that's, that's one of the things that people, regardless if they do it, you know, consciously or subconsciously, but it's not quick. It's not easy. It's not, it is, you know, it is, it does take time. It takes effort. It takes, you know, endurance. It takes those meltdowns because we've all had those. Mm -hmm. Um it takes those struggles to really realize that this is, this is what I want to do. This is what I love to do. And, you know, I've been in for, we've been in the industry for, you know, five, 10, 20 years. And well, I think you were 15 years. Um, yeah. But it's taken time. Like 15 years is a long time, right? Yeah. Like it's not a tomorrow gig. No, no, exactly. And, you know, this, it also, also reflects just talking about your, what you're saying too, when it comes to like even bringing on new team members and recruiting and stuff like that. You know, I know that like, there's everybody has their own methods with recruiting right now. I think the biggest thing too is, is that when people, people have to keep in mind when you're in this industry too, is, is that it's not just about getting somebody on your team, but it's really like building a relationship with that person and, you know, resonating with them, having a personal connection with them, which is going to want them to want to jump in I'll, like with you, because essentially this journey is like, you're, you're not just recruiting them. They are becoming a part of your community. They're becoming a part of your team. And it's, 
you know, it's this, it's this team building experience. And I think that when we're, you know, talking to people about this business, it's so important to, you know, explain that, that, you know, we're, we're, we're literally a close knit community and we all work really close together. And I think that, the other thing too is is that we we've, we've heard this so many times when it comes to other entrepreneurs or um you know leaders in this industry talking about people don't join companies people join you because they I love that connect, quote yeah they connect with you right it's like you know it i'll be honest with you i don't if i don't connect with the person who's trying to, you know, pot potentially recruit me, I'm not going to be interested in signing up because the thing is, is that I know that that person is going to be my leader and they're the one who, they're the ones who are going to literally guide me into, you know, this journey for myself, teach me and coach me the things that, you know, I need to learn. And if I don't connect with that person, if I don't feel a connection with that person, then I'm clearly not going to jump in. Right. And that's why, you know, it really comes down to connecting with the person and then, you know, developing that relationship with them. And that's also going to allow you to be more effective in building your own team and, you know, bringing that down with your team and having that relationship. Right. And goes back to what I said before, like my team members message me and say like, I don't feel like I could be successful in that without you here. Like you have really helped me. And so again, that resonates that it's not about the company, but it's about like the people like hundred percent because not everybody else, not everybody connects with one another. Right. So you really got to have that bond with one another to build a successful team for sure. Well, and like we've always, um, I've always said, I've always heard, this is a relationship business. That's what this is. This is, you know, building relationships, having those connections. And honestly, that is one of my favorite parts about this is like you and I, for example, never would have met if we weren't, maybe not never, but never would have met if it wasn't for the business, right? Yeah. And, you know, people that enroll on your team or, you know, even sidelines, uplines, downlines, cross lines, whatever you want to call it, people on your team, regardless of where they are, um, they can really legitimately make or break your business. And not that it's because we're like, we do what we want and we work for ourselves, but it's the people that you're working with that encourage you and reward you and celebrate you and push you when you, you know, you need that push and, you know, bring you out of that, you know, down road spiral if you need it. And unfortunately, not other, not all companies are like that. And that is one thing that I look for when I'm, you know, jumping into something or, you know, like you said, you, you talk to your, your potential upline. If you don't have a connection, that might not be, you know, the place for you. And, I am a big, big, big people person, but I'm also a big positivity person. And if somebody is, you know, really negative or, you know, trying to, you know, blame other people or not that that's the case, but it's almost like an interview with your upline, your potential upline. Like, is this somebody that I want to, I want to deal with? Because you are going to be at least for the first little bit tied at the hip with them to, if you want to get in and get going, you're tied at the hip with them. You're T they're telling you what to do. You're working with them consistently. And if it's a person that you don't get along with or, you know, you don't jive with or vibe with or whatever the word you want to use, you're not really going to want to be working with that person. Right. So it's it's almost like a, a little job interview, but you're up, you're you're uh, interviewing your boss instead of the other way around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I definitely can agree with you there for sure. Um, positivity and, you know, motivation within this industry is like so crucial. I do not like to surround myself, same as UT, and I don't like to surround myself with people who are negative or people who are toxic or just are naturally ones to constantly complain that to me is like an instant, like, no, like I can't, <laughs> I can't, can't be around that because when you surround yourself with negativity, then negativity comes into your life. But if you so surround yourself with positivity and positive people and people who are going to uplift you, 
naturally you're going to have a positive, abundant life. You know, I'm a firm believer in what you put into this universe is what you give, like what you get back. Right. So if I'm constantly portraying a positive light out there, then I feel that's naturally going to be something that comes back into my life. So, you know, I, I do my best to really try to remain positive in all situations and, um, you know, and just don't, don't get me wrong. I know there's moments of, you know, we're not, we're, nobody's perfect where we can have those negative thoughts. Right. But I think just realizing you're having those negative thoughts and trying to portray them into more of a positive way is the important thing. Um, and that's going to allow you to, again, um, become more successful in the future when you're constantly have that positivity around you and surrounding yourself with those kinds of people, people that support you, support what you're doing, you know, um, and lift you up, make you feel good about yourself. And you're doing the same to them like that. That is such a powerful thing when people are not willing to support what you're doing um, or literally are just against what you're doing or negative and, and have negative things to say. It instantly is going to draw you to want to be away from that person. Cause it's just, it's not attractive, right. When that happens. Yeah. And I think like, even to what you said, we all, we all are going to have our moments and frankly, it's encouraged to have your moments because if you're positive all the time, you're going to be building up this like negative little bit of negativity. Yeah. And I think it's important to have those moments and, you know, in acknowledge the fact that you had a shitty day or something happened or, Regardless, like we all have those negative moments and we all have those negative thoughts. But I think it's important to take take the moment, but don't make it like this big thing. Don't make it a day. Don't make it a week. Don't make it a year. Take the moment. Have the moment. Have the cry. Have the negative thought. Have the throw your fist into a pillow, whatever it is you do. <laughs> um, but move on from that. Take that exactly. as like a learning curve. Okay, I did this and it didn't work. Or... I did this and it, whatever, whatever happened, whatever the negative moment was, take it, reflect on it, move on from that. Because if it's very easy to get stuck in that negative headspace and get stuck with, okay, this doesn't work. Maybe I can't do this. Maybe this isn't for me. You know, maybe I don't have it in me. Maybe it's the people that maybe it's my team. Maybe it's this, maybe it's my customer. Maybe it's whatever the hell that you have going through your head. Get rid of that because that's not going to help you. That is not going to move you forward in your business or in your life for that matter. Take the moment, have the moment, but then move on. Yeah. Because it's that move on factor that I think is far and few between with people these days. And it's what's going to set you apart and what your vibe attracts your tribe, right? So if you're constantly negative, you're going to bring in that negative energy with you. If you're constantly positive and you're encouraging and you're rewarding and you're saying anybody can do this and, you know, like celebrating even those little wins. Like if you're, you know, if you sit down at your desk for 20 minutes and you work, that's a little win in my book. And if you, you know, send those messages while you're waiting in the school parking lot, Um, that's a win in my book because you're focusing your energy into something positive and something that's going to move your business forward instead of focusing your energy on like, oh, well, I'm, I have too much on my to-do list, so I'm not going to do any of it. I'm just going to sit on the couch. Yeah. I had that thought today, but I was like, "Mm, nope, can't do that. That's not going to move me forward regardless in my business or my life. So it's important to have that moment. Don't get me wrong, but then move forward. How can you change it? How can you pivot? How can you use that moment to, change your thought process or change your, your goals or change your whatever needs to be changed and move. Yep. No, a hundred percent. I definitely agree with you there for sure. Um, and then, you know, like talking about like, you know, as you build your team and as your team will grow, um, within your business kind of a thing, you naturally were also going to come across situations where, there's going to be a challenge within the team or you're going to run into conflict sometimes. Now, hopefully that doesn't happen too, too often, but on the rare occasion, you may see that happen where there's a conflict or some sort of challenge. And, you know, I think, oh gosh, we're getting a massive downpour here right now. 
Oh, it's sunny as can be here. Ha ha. Oh, nerd. I don't like the rain. I've had enough of it. Anyway, um, we're a moment. Like, yeah, exactly. Right? It's just so loud. It's like, like I can just hear how loud it is. But yeah, so when those things happen, when you run into those, you know, conflicts with your team or things happen, I think the important thing is just addressing them. But really, um, essentially making it about like, I don't know, I, I haven't had something like this happen in a long time, having a conflict within a team. So I don't know if I actually have a whole lot to say to that. I do know, I've had this once many, many years ago, where it came down to um, one of my team members had brought somebody on. And then the person she brought on um started talking to somebody that was a mutual friend of them and then they were and this and this is why I like our business so much cuz this wouldn't happen <laughs> so essentially it was like oh you know I'm going to recruit this person and then the other girl was like well but that's my person and then it became this huge like kerfuffle between these two girls of like well that was my person first I talked to her first and blah 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 but yet they're on the same team so she was upset that she was taking her. But see, this is the beauty of what we do. And I love this so much more because I feel like we're not going to run into these situations because we're a volume based business. You know, we're not here to really talk about our business a ton because that's not what these uh, podcasts are about. But just to talk a little, most MLMs are about like building this massive tree and, you know, and your trees go wide and then you go deep kind of thing. Well, our business is not like that. We are literally a, a three leg team um, and everything kind of rises to the top. So it's, we're strictly volume, only volume. And that is so amazing for situations like this, where someone is like, Oh, I've talked to that person first. You know, that's my team member. Well, it wouldn't matter in this situation who brought who in because they're all going to rise to the top anyways. And so that's what yeah. I love about this system that we have in place. It really is quite incredible. Um, and it also allows us to help our teams grow within like, and, and, you know, I'm all about encouraging my team to grow because all like, them growing is going to allow for us to grow and it provides success to everybody within the team. So, um, but again, we're not here to literally talk about our business. It's more just about running into these kinds of conflicts can be sometimes really, really difficult because you want to try and find that equilibrium and try to, you know, um, not, essentially have your team like arguing over stuff. Cause that does make it hard. Yeah. Um, but like addressing it is more like, okay, guys, like, let's just, you know, take a breather and <laughs> sort of like <laughs> figure out what's happening here. And let's not, let's not make this like, you know, a, a war between each other. And I think, um, coming down to just constantly again, trying to remain positive in situations like that. And, you know, yeah, essentially just taking that breather and reflecting on what's happened and not let it interfere with your potential of growth, I think is yeah. important. And I think like I, those of you that know me, I'm not a conflict person. Like I avoid conflict at all costs because I, I don't <clears throat> like it. It's not something that I want to deal with. I don't think anybody really likes conflict to be honest, but like I get this like little ball of anxiety in my chest if I have to deal with like something yeah. like that. Um, and so I... I know I had one instance and I can't remember what it was. I literally can't remember what it was, but I remember somebody on my team and it wasn't my direct, like it wasn't someone that I personally had sponsored. It was a couple levels down at that point. And I can't remember the instance. Like I genuinely cannot remember the problem, but all I remember is this girl phoned me and she was so like physically like a phone call, which <laughs> was like, I remember like whatever. Anyway, I thought it was funny. <laughs> and because I, for the most part, I will chat via text message just because it's easy. It's easier for like, me because I'm always on the go. It's easier for them. They can answer when it's convenient for them. But she phoned me and she basically like just ripped me a new one. And I was like, 
kind of trying not to laugh, but like also like anxiety because people are yelling at me and I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah. And I basically just tried to like reassure, obviously, that like, okay, obviously this is a problem in your in your mind. Let's figure out how we can fix it. I don't ever remember if it got resolved. I don't think it did because I think she was just, she was so mad and she was so negative about the situation that she was just like, hey, I'm done. I'm out. I'm like, as much as I don't want that to happen or that to be a common occurrence, you know, if that's your mentality that something happens and you're done, you're out, then maybe we're not meant to be, you know, working together. Maybe our our vibes just don't mix yeah. and maybe you're not meant to be on our team or you're not meant to be in our organization or you're not meant to be with this company or, and that's okay. Like every company is not for every person and that's why we have, you know, different streams of income and different streams of different companies, different organizations, different network marketing places, different industries, all the things. And I think that was just, that was a moment for me. Like that was pretty early on in my business. So I am like panicking and freaking out and upset, but looking back on it, it's like, okay, that just wasn't meant to be. And I am a big meant to be person. Like shit happens the way that it's most meant to happen. And so it's just almost, again, having that moment, I had a moment, <laughs> but I reflected on it. Maybe it was a year or two later, but I reflected on it and I said, Kay, like, obviously this person wasn't meant to be working with me or in my organization or whatever, and that's okay. Um, frankly, I don't want to be associated with somebody who is, you know, screaming my head off when you don't even know who I am. You've never met me. It's, you know, someone few few like I can't control the actions of other people no. and so it was kind of like it was an uncomfortable moment 100% was an uncomfortable moment but it's you know taking that time and realizing that you know not everyone is meant to be working with you side by side for some like seasons change life change maybe they work with you for a couple months and it's not meant to be or you know whatever the whatever the situation is but and I'm not saying you know I want to kick people off my team because I would never ever do that but no. it's just that realization that, you know, if something goes on like that, we can, both parties have to be involved. But if one party is like, no, I'm done, I'm out, then I would rather spend my time focusing on the people that want to be in than trying to like encourage this person that, no, no, you should come back. No, like this is meant to be like, it's not, if you're not in it, then I'm not, I don't want to spend my time trying to make you think that you should be in it because that's not useful of either one of our times or productive. Yeah, no, I definitely can agree there. For sure. <laughs> you know, it's this is one thing that I've learned in, you know, my lifetime is, is that we cannot change people. We cannot, yeah. you know, I'm not here to convince people. It's more of like, you know, you have to understand that everybody's decisions and everybody's paths are different. At the end of the day, we just have to be accepting of like what they decide. So if someone is really not feeling something or they don't feel connected or <clears throat> pardon me, the, you know, the journey that they're on is not working for them. That's for them to decide. We can't be that deciding factor. Right. And um, you know, because the only people that we can change the only people that we have control over are ourselves so yeah. you know it's it's important to just realize that and you know um let those moments go if they're not going to line up with our paths and and it is what it is right so for sure I definitely agree there for sure and I think there's also that balance <clears throat> of like you know I can't change someone's mind if you decided that timing isn't right or the business isn't right or whatever, that's fine. Like I'm, I'm more than happy to help support you in the journey that you want to be on. But I think there's also that balance of if someone's wants to be in the journey and they've just, they've had that negative moment or they've had, you know, shit go south in their life or something and they need to restart. I am happy to help you restart. I am happy to help you relaunch. Yeah. I'm happy to help you, you know, reprioritize or, whatever it is you need to do, like we're all in, I'm happy to help you in any way that I can, but I'm not going to go in and try and change your mind. That's not something like you can't change anybody's mind. Everybody has their own no. opinions and thoughts and, you know, in the most positive, and like, we're not saying this, that like, okay, you're negative. We're going to kick you off your team. Like that's not the case by any no. means. But if somebody comes in with this, like really, you know, something's happened and it's just, okay, I'm out, I'm done. Like I'm not doing this something's happened, they're super negative, like they're focusing on that one negative instead of like having a moment and trying to pivot. 
that's okay. But it means that we're not meant to work. And maybe, you know what, life changes, seasons change, maybe they will come back, you know, again, meant to be. And if they come back, great. If not, that's okay. You can focus on your, you can focus your time on the people that, you know, do want to work or do want to do the things or, you know, want to be in your circle. Um, There's a reason we all have these little circles because not everybody is meant to be in everybody's circle. Yeah, no, for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. Not everybody, not everybody aligns with everyone. Right. And that (laughs) is the beauty of humans and how we are all different. And, you know, um, it's, it's quite, it's quite amazing sometimes to see that. And I agree with you hundred percent. Sometimes people's uh, paths are on a different journey or they're just, the timing is not right for them. And, you just have to kind of let that go and, and sort of move forward for sure. But uh, I'm just looking at the time here <laughs> and it is time to wrap it up for sure. But uh, yeah, I guess I think the key takeaway really that we we were talking about today is just, you know, being a good leader, <clears throat> providing, you know, that inspiring, uplifting um, mentality to our teams and constantly just remaining in a very positive mindset as the best we can, uh, regardless of our bad days, just constantly being able to get through that so that we can just be the best version of ourselves and allow others to be the same for sure. Yeah, no, I totally, I couldn't have said that any better. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I love this. I love doing this because we can talk for hours, but we're going to be respectful and not. Yeah. Um, but that said, if there's something you want us to chat about, you know, if you have questions, if you have like topics you want us to touch on or anything like that, send it our way. Send us, you know, a Facebook message or I think there's a way to somehow message us on Spotify. I should try and figure that out. Um, definitely- uh, yeah, actually, no, on Spotify, every time we have a podcast, a new release of an episode, at the end, it'll ask you sort of what you thought of our episode. So please feel free to leave those comments for us because those are important and will definitely help us sort of grow within this podcast and come up with new ideas and all that sort of stuff. Goes to show how much I know about technology, which is nice. <laughs> Hey, that's not true. You <laughs> <have another podcast. laughs> anyway, okay. We're going to wrap it up. Follow us on Instagram. Um, find us on Facebook, Spotify, Apple, Google. I think we're on all of them. YouTube. Um, subscribe. Answer us questions. All the things. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. We so appreciate it. And hopefully you guys are liking this because yeah. we're having fun. So hopefully yes, you are. Yes, we definitely are. So. <laughs> Until our next adventure, keep smiling, keep laughing, keep it real. See you later. Bye, Bye guys.